Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Leader's Edge. And tonight, we're going to be in for a special treat because we have a unique guest who will talk to us about the role of HR amidst the pandemic. And the one who will introduce him properly is somebody who I regard a lot because she happens to be not just the president of the Speakers Bureau, but my mom. <laughs> so to introduce our guest, uh, I'll turn over to Dina Loomis. Thank you, Dino. Hello, everybody. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce someone who is really very popular in the HR uh, groups around the Philippines, Asia, and practically around the world because he is a well-traveled person. He is such an active member of PMAP and that's how I got to know him. So praise God for that. He has been in the practice of human resource management, organizational development, and strategic HR for over 20 years. Talk about experience. He obtained both his diploma and master degree in industrial relations, major in human resource development with honors from the UP Diliman. He is a certified facilitator of DDI, both for interaction management and administrator for targeted selection. He has attended and led training in various countries like Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and other parts of the world, facilitating courses in IM and TS. He was part of the Philippine delegation to the Society for Human Resource Management Conferences in Chicago, Illinois in 2018 and Las Vegas, Nevada in 2019. He has worked for top brands in the Philippines and in the world, like Motolite Batteries, HAVI Logistics Incorporated, a global supply chain partner of McDonald's, Canon, and Nissan. Currently, Eric is the general manager for human resources of Nissan Philippines Incorporated. Nissan as we all know, is the leading automotive brand in the world based in Yokohama, Japan, and is part of the global alliance of Nissan, Renault, Mitsubishi. He has been with Nissan for over five years and has been recognized for his efforts in executive talent acquisition, leadership acceleration for key talents, strategic rewards, engagement, and retention. His efforts in key talent management has been also hailed as a trailblazing program by his company. In 2018, he was honored as Presidential Innovation Awardee. The award was given for his invaluable contribution in building an engaging and high performance organ organizational culture. What can I say? It seems to me he is a walking role model for John Maxwell's brands of leadership. So, ladies and gentlemen, I can hardly wait myself. Here is our guest speaker, and let's all welcome him, Eric Del Castillo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dina and Dino, for, for that very uh, nice introduction. Uh, I'm very, very honored to uh, be part of your, uh, of your uh, program, and I'm happy to... Uh, of course, welcome all our, our guests, our listeners, our viewers, our participants in today's uh, program. Thank you very much, Diana and Dino. So, uh, Eric, would you 
like to share your screen and tell okay. us more about your topic? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Um, our discussion for today will be about the role of HR uh, during this uh, pandemic. The role of HR as a leader and as a uh, motivator amidst this, very, this global unprecedented crisis that we're going through. Um, and you know, um, if I may start, uh, the number one skill that we all must have, not only during this crisis, in life is not giving up. That is exactly what we need, especially now that we're going through this very turbulent times. For some people, uh, they find this uh, pandemic to be some sort of darkness. For others, they find uh, this pandemic as, as some sort of uh, challenge. Others are very anxious because of uncertainties. Others are really afraid, really um, going into, you know, uh, difficulty of um, having stress and uh, going through a lot of anxieties. And we in HR must take the leadership role of making sure that we navigate the entire organization during these times. Our, our topic for today, as I mentioned, will be about leading in times of crisis, the role of HR amidst uncertainties. And we all know that the role of, say, the CEO could be as head of the business. HR, HR role, on the other hand, should be some sort of heart in the organization. Yes, we do need, uh, we do need to really push the business during these times, but we also have to balance that with compassion, empathy, and kindness, because all our people are going through this difficult time and it has to be, and we have to understand their situation. Maraming pagkakataon, maraming mga, uh, mga balibalita, na may, na may mga empleyado, may mga manggagawa that are going through some sort of crisis. In, some are, in fact, uh, thinking of, you know, uh, suicide to the point of, you know, trying to... Uh, let go of their lives, which is really, really uh, a situation that we don't want to happen, especially in organizations such as ours, a multinational company. I would say that um, our role in HR can be likened to a beacon. A beacon is a source of inspiration. A beacon is a, um, a source of hope. A beacon is something that guides us. And in other words, I'd like to say that uh, HR acts as, as, if they, as if we are lighthouse. And we all know the role of lighthouse. We may, we may be in a uh, situation where technology and uh, aiding uh, navigation, but still, I believe that uh, the role of lighthouse remains to be very, very important. In the organization, we say that uh, HR acts in providing light amidst darkness because some people feel that this uh, pandemic is some sort of um, some sort of difficulty that's really, really hard to get over. Some people find it as really um, a challenging, really a challenging point where they would lose their, even their livelihood. We know that currently 
uh, as reported by the Department of Labor, over 2 million people have lost their jobs. Even for companies like Nissan, where we know that we are a multinational company, we are backed up by our mother office in Japan, we're very strong, and yet we still have that kind of uh, uh, anxiety, unnecessary anxiety, feeling that, are we going to have work tomorrow? Since, since the pandemic, we've experienced lockdown of say, 30 days, and for some people, they've not been reporting for work for over six months already. So, so isn't that very challenging and difficult, really very stressful? So as a lighthouse, as a lighthouse, we provide our employees some sort of guidance, some sort of signals. You know, um, yes, we are in a very difficult time, but we are trying to cope especially in our organization in Nissan. We're trying to cope. Um, when, the, when the lockdown was lifted around May, the company tried to bounce back and tried to open its doors. And HR wa was at the forefront of returning to work. You know, it's very, very difficult. Even my my people, my, my colleagues in HR are saying, nakakatakot bumalik sa trabaho. No? It's very, uh, you know, it's very uncertain. We don't see the enemy. Hindi natin nakikita yung enemy natin. Hindi natin nakikita yung ating kalaban. And yet, the role of HR is to stand at the forefront. Yes, I said that the CEO may be the head. HR is the heart. And at this point, we really have to show to our people, yes, there are challenges. Yes, this virus is unseen. But we in HR, we are here to provide you warnings, to provide you policies, to provide you the signals in order for us to, to you know, to avoid or even uh, keep you away from danger. That's, that's our way. If, I, if, if yes. I may ask you a question, yeah. I'm, I'm really curious about how um, Nissan, or in your case, HR, is responding to the challenge that you're facing right now. Um, if I may cite just briefly, um, I know that there is a company in the independent power production industry that yeah as a way of helping their employees stay healthy, provide um, a shuttle service uh, from door to door so they are um, free from being exposed to the virus. And yet uh, their HR tells me that uh, they have had to let go of some of their personnel and uh, nationwide we, we are losing about 45% of our people to retrenchments and downsizing. Um, I, I commend your, your sentiment and your feeling that HR is the heart of the organization. Uh, what, can, what has HR for Nissan, for example, been doing to uh, assuage some of the fears of its people? Thank you very much, Dino, for that wonderful question. I'd like to start off by saying that Five years before this pandemic, we've already prepared our organization. We're not new to work from home. We call it work anywhere. When I joined the company in June of 2015, the first mandate of my president then was Eric, prepare the work from home. So the policy has been there five years and we're we've been practicing work from home ever since. Although it's not that um, as, uh, you know, as much, but we know how work from home operates. Okay, that's one. So when the lockdown was uh, took effect on March, I think March 17 or March 18, it, was, it wasn't that, that difficult for us to implement work from home. So we implemented work from home. 100% of our employees uh, are provided with laptops. Okay, oh. when the government required people to come to work around May 18, if I'm not mistaken, because we have, you know, we are, we're a company of cars, so we issued uh, a mandate that for those who will be coming for work, 
they will be provided with a shuttle, door to door, even if you're coming from the province, even if you're coming from, say, Bulacan or the likes of Cavite, Laguna, we would ferry you to the office. And it, and it has been our, our policy that we will have some sort of pacing. So we started with just 10% during the first two weeks of May and then first two weeks after the lockdown was lifted and then we increased that to 20%, 30% and then when, when, the, uh, when, the N when NCR returned to uh, MECQ, we had to return back to our 20% uh, threshold meaning we had to control the number of people who will report to work. I'm happy to report to you, Dino and Dina, that we've not, uh, we've not laid off a single employee during this pandemic. Even if the market has been down 30 to 40%, imagine, mm -hmm. um, our headcount now is, uh, should have been uh, just around 70% because our, uh, our performance is this year, can uh, be traced to our 2017 performance. You know, if you compare our volume this year, it was our volume back in 2017. So we were only uh, about 70 to 80 people then, and now we're over 100, we're over close to 150 people. So imagine we've not laid off a single employee, we provided a uh, shuttle service, and um, I recommended to the, to the president that we will continue to provide vitamins to all our employees from day one when we returned to office back okay. in May. Yes, mm -hmm. and we've been providing them, you know, uh, vitamins and continuous. We do uh, testing for, for our frontliners, especially the drivers who are, who are driving the shuttles, our nurse, our doctor, our security guard, and those who are uh, recommended by the doctor. If there's a need for RT-PCR or antigen or whatever, we will do that. And uh, we said that our major policy is employee safety. When we returned to work, Dino, our, our policy was very clear. Uh, employee safety, followed by infection control. And the third one was business continuity. Imagine how people is regarded in Nissan Philippines and Nissan all over the world. Actually, we do prioritize people. People is our heart, and that we we, we take pride of um, managing them. And of course, we'd like to ensure that they're all safe and in good health. So th those wow. are the things that we've <laughs> done so far, uh, Dino. And we continue. And thank God, up to this day, not a single employee has been uh, infected. And I hope that the Lord will bless us not to have one until this pandemic ends. I hope so too. Well, clearly yeah. that, that shows that Nissan has a, a big heart for its employees and that clearly their loyalty is very well placed. Uh, also for, for viewers out there who like me own a Nissan, this lets us know that if yeah. your car ever gets in trouble, uh, the repair places are still open. Like my favorite is at Man Trade, so I can just oh good, over. yeah, <laughs> just bring yes, it over. I know there. people from there. Yes, yeah. thank you, Dino. Yeah, and that's right. Take good care of your car because yes. Nissan <laughs> takes care of its people. You know, health yeah. is wealth. So that's right. That's right. You go on, Eric. I I love what you're sharing with us. Do yeah. go on. Yes, and you know, uh, Dino, just to uh, let you know, and Dina. Um, recently, uh, we did uh, recommend to management that beginning day one, all our probationary employees, all our people who will be coming in, because we're still hiring people, uh, will be provided with their HMO. That wasn't, that wasn't our policy before the pandemic. But during this pandemic, we knew how important health is and we knew how people uh, also are concerned about their situation. So we said, we'd like to take that problem away from your mind. We want to give you peace of mind. That's why we declared beginning August that all our employees who are new or coming in probationary will be provided with HMO. And that we always take care and we always look after them. And um, if I may continue about how I liken um, the role of HR during these trying times is that 
we provide, uh, you know, we navigate the business. You know? If the CEO, as I said, is the head and HR is the heart, you know, even if we have problems about people, uh, we know that they're going through a lot. We know that they are concerned about their families. Some of them are raising concerns about returning to work. We still try to provide them um, all the guidance. We ensure that we uh, take care of our employees because we know that they will provide uh, the services to our customers. If you take care of your people and if that is your policy, employee first, we are sure that people will take care of our customers. That's why at this time when I say navigation, I would say that we provide them with all the tools necessary so that they can perform their jobs. We ensure that they're, they're, they stay motivated, they stay on top, and they are all happy working with Nissan. You know, it's really challenging. I ha we have this called, we have this uh, program called uh, Pit Stop, or in other words, in Tagalog, we call it Kamustahan. And, and just the other day, I had my fourth Kamustahan with our employees. And I always ask them, do you still want to report for work? Some would say, um, you know, we got used to working from home and uh, we like it this way, but we still, of course, want to return to office. Some are taking care of their old parents, 70, 80 years old. And for this kind of employees, we don't force them to, re to return to work. We know the challenges. We know that uh, they may, you know, um, if they report for work, they could bring the virus, infect the, their uh, parents, the, the older ones. So we, we take care of this situation, but they still take care of our business. So we continue to provide them with understanding, compassion, and empathy. And that's the reason why probably our business is uh, still going strong. We're coping, you know, we're, we're going through uh, challenges. Uh, the situation in the market is 30, 40, 30 to 40% down. Imagine that but we still provide our employees with their salaries. We did not cut their salaries. We even provided bonuses in July. And so we continue to provide, we continue to, to navigate the business during these trying times, ensuring that employees are motivated. And just to share with you uh, this slide, where the first, uh, these are the dimensions. Uh, the first arrow, uh, on your left, uh, you see these are the dimensions, people, processes, product, and profit. These are the dimensions of a business, you know, an, an organization. You have people, you have processes, yes, and you, you have products that would come out for profit. However, we were, uh, we were struck by the pandemic that resulted to employee having fear, you know, uh, having this kind of uncertainty, have feeling of uncertainty, and it feels like very chaotic. For some people, they find this uh, pandemic to be some sort of darkness, and it's very difficult. That is the reason why HR has to uh, provide that kind of light, that kind of warning, and that kind of navigation to the business. That's why we call ourselves um, as uh, lighthouse and as uh, as I said earlier and to, uh, to just to uh, to uh, to highlight the role of um, of HR we provide light yes we provide direction we provide them with vision because people are asking what will happen to the business what will happen to us uh, we are in a pandemic for almost uh, two months or one and a half months we've not had any business transactions. Are we still going to have salaries? Are we still going to receive our salaries? And um, of course we did try to, uh, to manage, but we did try to tell them that we will see this through. We will help you and please help the business as well. So we provide them with short-term 
um, objectives. We pro provided them with a uh, vision of what, how we want to, uh, uh, to navigate this um, situation. So we provided them that kind of light when they feel that we are in total darkness. We provided them with signals. Signal is act, stands for policies, uh, processes during this pandemic. Imagine that we halted day-to-day, -day, everyday work. We had to, um, to stop uh, providing them their uh, their day-to-day -day activities, you know. We had to resort to work from home. It's very challenging. And even with that, we had to really change some of our activities, like how do we, how do we uh, approve a particular policy or how do we approve, a, how do we sign checks? So we had to resort to e-signature, e-approval, things like that. So HR provided them with some sort of, uh, because um, IT is under the care, under my care. So we did try to provide them with all the necessary uh, support along this line. And when you say navigate, uh, as I said, we traverse this, um, this difficult times with, with strength. We know that uh, it's not easy to motivate people during this situation we keep on communicating, you know, the, the secret probably Dina and Dina, Dina and Dino is that um, we keep on communicating with our people, even our president, he would uh, schedule one-on-ones with us, heads of divisions, he would schedule one-on-one -on -one with, um, with our managers, even with our staff, just so understand their situation. And HR would have its own kamustahan, uh, just to understand what they're going through. And that's the reason why I believe that our employees are able to navigate these uh, difficult times. And i um, happy to, uh, to share with you that after the lockdown in May, we were able to bounce back quite easily in June. We were able to hit our, you know, not the regular target, but the target that we set during this uh, pandemic. We were able to achieve our June, our July, and our August targets. While they were uh, reduced, we were able to at least, um, and through our, the help of our people, I, I, uh, of course, I have to uh, give credit to our people. We would not have achieved those, uh, those uh, Keeping targets, we would not have achieved those things if not for them. So it's really, really, um, really, uh, you know, it really, it's good for the heart to to note that you know when your people are able to do their jobs even just even these trying times. So it's it's really, really, um, uh, you know, I would say happy moment for HR seeing your people. Um, having all this um, happiness and, you know, uh, when you talk to them, they're all um, smiling and uh, sharing, their, sharing their happy moments, even at home. And, you know, as okay. I said earlier, yes, Dino. Yes. Um, Eric, if, if I, may, I may ask before yeah. we move on, we have a COVID-19 expert who is also one of our major speakers uh, yeah. we have offered a lot of webinars uh, to provide free to to our kabayans he yeah. predicts he predicts that the pandemic will probably go all the way up to end of 2021 now how <laughs> how do you project the nisan your organization to sustain the kind of deep concern and welfare that you are giving to your employees, considering uh, this, all of this is not going to go away right away. So I, I'm just wondering. Okay, thank you, Dinah, for that question. 
yes, we do understand that this uh, pandemic will not um, uh, go away immediately. In fact, uh, the World Health Organization has predicted that this pandemic can last two years. It's very, uh, you know, it's very challenging uh, to have this kind of situation. What, we, what we're doing now is, one, is we did uh, try to uh, freeze hire, except for those for replacement. We're, we're hiring, yes, only for those uh, employees who uh, resign and, um, and that we have to fill those vacancies. Yes, and we try to, of course, um, manage our, uh, our resources. Uh, we try to focus more on uh, online training. We try to focus more on um, ensuring uh, that we don't spend much on engagement while we still do have this uh, uh, constant, uh, regular meeting with our people through webinars, uh, sorry, through uh, virtual meetings. Um, we try to uh, manage costs as well because we know that the pandemic may not, uh, may not end soon. So we're, we're looking at that. And um, moving into uh, the next year, our, actually we follow a fiscal year, Diana. So uh, our fiscal year will end March. I've, I've, uh, I've discussed this with the president and we're looking at keeping our manpower, our headcount, uh, at the same level, probably that's one of our future actions in order to manage uh, the business. And even uh, we did some uh, coping mechanisms as well, like uh, we uh, also used our, uh, our leaves uh, during the lockdown in order to manage costs. And uh, we did manage overtime. We lowered um, overtime by 70%. And we tried to um, ensure uh, that all our expenses are, uh, are really managed. Those things are some of the coping mechanisms that we did, Dinah, in order to survive. Because we said that we will not uh, lay off employees. We will not stop um, uh, salaries. And true to our promise, since, since May up to now, we've been paying our employees their salaries. Yeah, so these things, amazing. we know, yes, yeah. that's right, Diana, that's right. It's, it's just amazing. And I, looking, listening to you, I caught something. You are continuing training, development, learning development of your people. So what sort of programs have you been doing during this pandemic period? Okay, that's nice. Um, as I said, we have this kind of uh, learning at Alliance. Uh, it's actually um, a learning platform that we have online for our employees. But even before those uh, hard functional competencies, we started off uh, during the start of the pandemic with um, mental health courses. Um, and then we try to provide them with wellness courses. And uh, these courses actually did help um, make our employees understand how to, manage, um, how to manage the situation. Because at the beginning, as I said, uh, people were feeling that uh, we are in total darkness. Well, that's, um, that's just a figure of a speech. But, but to some, that's true. So we had to really um, spend some time talking with our employees, providing them this with, with kind of courses. And then recently, we had a course on uh, neuroscience, how to manage your brains in order to, to, be, to behave this way, in order to act this way, in order to feel this way. These are some of the courses that we provided to our employees during this time, uh, Dinah. And of course, the online courses are some of the... Uh, uh, competencies for uh, functional competencies such as uh, strategic thinking, how to manage, uh, uh, how to lead virtually, things like that. Wow. I mean, what can I say? Um, you, you do plan and you are able to implement your plan with care. So congratulations. Wonderful. So let's hear the rest of your presentation. Yes. Yes, thank you, Dina. And um, some of the top business concerns during, uh, during and post-pandemic are, of course, employee welfare, 
infection control, business continuity, and business recovery. Employee welfare, as I said earlier, we take uh, uh, pride of saying that we really take care of our employees. From the time the pandemic started and up to now, we ensure that we don't force our employees to report for work if they are afraid to come to work. We talk to them. We don't force them. If they are asked to report for work and if they're willing to report for work, we would provide shuttle service door to door. If they report for work, they are ensured of being provided with vitamins. They are provided with uh, bottled water, not the, the water that's on, that we uh, are used to having, you know, faucet type. We provide them with bottled waters to ensure uh, that they are taken care of. We ensure, in fact, we make sure that our employees don't, uh, don't contract the virus inside the office. We talk to our um, lesser uh, to ensure that uh, humidity, to ensure that there's free flow of outdoor, uh, you know, outdoor air to indoor. So the, uh, there's a balance. So we even had to uh, assign regular doctor on a on schedule, um, even on um, telemedicine. Our OSH physician would report to office three times a week, and he's open on telemedicine um, any time of the day. And if you need to have, you know, uh, regular, uh, if you need to have calls with him, you just have to, to uh, call him or message him. We have our nurse who is assigned at the office on a, day, on a daily basis. And uh, we ensure physical distancing. We provide masks. We provide everything. We follow government and even go beyond that. And as I said earlier, we're glad and we are so happy that not one of our employees got infected so far. And I thank God for that. Wow. And business continuity, yes. Business yeah. continuity. Because we believe that uh, the business cannot survive if we do not provide service from the office. Because there are, there are requirements that have to be uh, prepared from the office. So uh, HR had to uh, lead and uh, open the offices on May 18 when uh, return to work was uh, declared by the government. So HR ensure, we ensure that there's daily OIC, officer in charge, uh, providing day-to-day um, -day, uh, service to our employees. And to ensure that the business will continue, HR would always make sure that we can be contacted anytime, any time of the day. And if they need any help, we would provide them because we are very concerned about how the business would operate because our dealers are already open. Uh, at least 50% of their uh, manpower, some are operating, I think, up to 70 or 80% at the dealerships. So we have to provide services at the headquarters as well. And moving on, uh, foreseeing that this pandemic will end, say, uh, first quarter of 2021 or even second quarter. And if uh, authorities uh, predict that it won't, then we have already, we're already planning for business recovery. How are we going to uh, ensure that? Um, there are constant uh, meetings with um, the top management on how we will move towards business recovery. And of course, um, some top business uh, skills during this and post-pandemic. Or um, I made mention earlier the importance of uh, empathy, the importance of compassion, the importance of kindness. Because we cannot we cannot survive this crisis, Dina and Dino, without understanding the needs of our employees and navigating uncharted waters. We constantly, we continue to have management committee meetings weekly, and uh, we try to understand how the situation in the market, and we try to uh, ensure that we respond to the needs of the market, and our employees are ready to respond to the needs of our customers. Learning agility, that's another skill that we need, because whatever we have learned, or whatever we are learning now, we have to apply them after this pandemic. 
we have to pro we have to uh, to ensure that all the challenges that we've faced and all the learnings that we have gained are going to apply in the future because we will never know even if this pandemic hasn't happened in our lifetime it may happen again so we have to be prepared we have to be prepared now more than ever and of course digital dex dexterity uh, we all know that uh, virtual uh, communication is uh, the new normal and um, we, we've seen some people struggling I myself did struggle in the beginning and even now I would say and so we provide um, our employees our leaders with um, with training on uh, virtual leadership and even how to use zoom um, meeting and how to use Skype and all those things these are some uh, things that we are of course providing to our employees all right okay Dino you may have some some last words for oh all right there is one more yeah there is one and, more here yeah there is just one more uh, Diana on resiliency uh, oh, yeah. we all know yes oh, this is really really important um, yes. you know that um, in this kind of uh, uncertainty uh, we all feel down, yeah. but we have to um, to develop this kind of skill of, you know, bouncing. They, they don't just call it bouncing back. They now call it bouncing forward or bounce forward. Resiliency is being able to uh, face the difficult times and, you know, being able to uh, to rise above the challenges and, you know, and being able to win these um, challenges and be able to uh, to, uh, to become stronger and uh, be able to lead the organization better. Yes. Wow. Um, I, I could say that, Eric, your, your presentation has certainly been a big yeah. source of reassurance for so many of our listeners out there, yeah. uh, some of whom are probably very much concerned about the future of their families, yeah. their parents, and even their, as simple as their jobs. Uh, clearly, uh, one must not look at HR anymore as simply one of the departments of an organization, but clearly uh, the heart of an organization. It's almost like uh, the nurturing part of an organization. And it's wonderful how someone like you, Eric, and so many of our other guests who have also spoken about how their HRs have been struggling and coping are showing that companies don't just go after their business goals, but they also go after the goal of ensuring the health, the, the betterment of their people. Yeah. Uh, that is certainly something that should inspire others so that don't be afraid because your company cares for you. As long as we yeah. care for our company, yeah. it's a win-win yeah. proposition. But so, I really, uh, Dino, I really must congratulate Nissan Philippines and most especially Eric because this is the most comprehensive program <laughs> yes. I've ever seen for these times. And uh, while well, others have mentioned a little bit of this and that, but this is so thorough and it will serve as a guideline for all other organizations out there. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. It's my honor, Diana and Dino, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, Eric, uh, how did you re react to finding out that Diana is my mom? <laughs> Just curious. I was, people... already, I was already, how come their name is Dino and Diana? <laughs> Probably they have a really, they, are they, um, you know, I, I, I really, I don't, I want to, to, not to know actually, <laughs> until, until you mentioned earlier, oh, mom is coming, oh. As, yeah. as I thought. <laughs> but you know what, Eric? Uh, I think PMAP has given mom the fountain of youth because if you look at our pictures here, she looks way younger than I do. <laughs> uh, being active in, in that organization has really done wonders for her. And so, yes, uh, she's very active in PMAP. Yeah. Indeed. So, Eric, again, thank you from our viewers. Thank you from our, our loyal listeners. And I'd like to let everybody know that next week, 
we're going to have a discussion on what is called the new and the next normal. How do we continuously navigate and motivate our people in this time of crisis? Our speaker for that particular day will be Michelle Cordero Garcia. And so please don't miss that. They'll go live on September 30, 2020 at 7 p.m. So on behalf of the Speakers Bureau, thank you again, Eric. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Mom, for co-hosting this show with me. <laughs> thank you, Dina, Diana, and Dino. <laughs> and to all of our viewers, welcome to Season 2, Episode 2. Thank you so much for your continued patronage, and see you soon, not just on FB, but on YouTube. Good day, good yeah. night, everybody. Thank good you so night. much for joining Bye -bye. us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>